Greetings Commanders, this is Cree Cree here and today I'm going to give you another ship build video. Today we're looking at the Eagle. So this will be a beginner's Eagle that is outfitted for combat, which I think is probably the best thing that it can be fitted out for. So we'll be going through the build of the Eagle, I'll be giving you some tips and tricks to help you survive and uh, do more damage as well as a helpful website that will help you find places that you can go and get those credits for your combat bonds. Okay, so the first thing that we'll do is that we'll hop straight into the hard points. So, as you can see, there are three hard points compared to the Sidewinder, which is another small ship. So the Sidewinder usually, well, not usually, the Sidewinder has two hard points, whereas the Eagle has three which means that you have more options with your hard points. So I've gone with multi cannon on top and then on the underside I've gone with two pulse lasers. They're all gimbaled so you can auto lock on your target without having to worry about missing your target while firing your weapons. It just makes it a hell lot easier. Moving on to the utility mounts, as you can see there is only one spot. So for this spot, there are a few different things that you can put in there. It really does kind of depend on what you would like to put in there. For example, you could put heat sinks if you feel like you're hitting up far too much. You could put in a defense turret to help get rid of those missiles being lobbed at you. Or you can put in a shield booster. I've put in a C. I would like to have put in an A, but... It draws too much power and I think you see is a perfect amount. Now moving on we'll go to core. Now for core I've gone with a 1A military grade composite. Just so you do have a thicker hull. Having a shield booster does help but having a thicker hull would help you even more. And I'll get into uh, what shields I've gone with when we get into the optional. Now with the power plant, I've gone with a 2A. This is so that we can have all the power that we need. Uh, as you can probably see down the bottom here, it does say that when it's deployed, it's too much. But there's a trick. In order to be able to use everything that you have without having anything be shut down and then life support's going and you're panicking, you think you're gonna die, all you need to do is that when it's over a little bit, just deactivate the cargo hatch. And that will give you more than enough power for what you need. Now thrusters I've gone with a 3A as well uh, because this ship is very maneuverable so having that extra power in your thrusters really helps so you can get out of the way of any uh, missiles coming your way and doing your best to try and stay behind a target especially if they are a bit bigger than you because they can't turn as good as you can. So if you're able to you know spin around get behind them real quick and that is a huge help for you. Next is the frame shift drive. I've gone with a 3A. I've gone with all my ships, I've gone with an A. This is just basically so that you can get the furthest jump that you possibly can out of all your ships. So going with the 3A is definitely the way to go. Life support, I've gone with a D. When it's at stock, it is an E, but if you go with D, it means that it is the lightest. You do still have an ample amount of time left to get to a station and uh, get your canopy back and running and everything like that in case you are in dire straits. So having a D is definitely helpful, especially with that jump range because it is so light. Next is the power distributor. This is also A. This is so that you can evenly and more efficiently spread the power through your engines, your weapons and your system. So your system is usually for your shield. So if you need to shields up faster, then move all your pips to your systems. That way you can get the shields up. Weapons, so you get more power with your weapons. And engines is what you probably would guess, so that you can get away faster because you've got more power there. It's a faster recharge for you to actually boost away as well. Now lastly I've gone with a 2A sensors. 
This is just so I can increase the range of um, my sensors so I can see any ships around me, find out if they're wanted and kind of go from there. Now optional. Okay, in the optional I've gone with the first thing, your shield generator. I have put in a 3C biweave. The reason why I've gone with biweave is because with smaller ships it is better to have biweaves on your ship because of the very very fast recharge rate. The reason why you'd want a really fast recharge rate on your shields is because you are a small ship meaning that your hull isn't as uh, strong as any other ships that are larger than you so it is best to get your shields back as soon as possible. But we do have a bunch of hull reinforcements that will help out with that just in case the shields do go down. And speaking of which, I have heaps. So I've gone with the 2D hull reinforcement, another 2D hull reinforcement, 1D hull reinforcement, another 1D hull reinforcement, the last 1D hull reinforcement, and of course I've gone with a 1D module reinforcement. So the hull reinforcement obviously helps with thickening up your hull so that way it's it's harder to break down but also having the module reinforcement really helps so that way it is harder for any modules to be knocked out so for example your thrusters if they get knocked out then you just kind of spin in in space and you can't do anything about it unless you do a uh, scan and reboot in your right panel under ship and see if you're able to fix it that way otherwise you may need to get uh, a friend to come and use their repair limpets on you so that you can get back up and running. I'll be putting a link for this build in the description below as well to help you out. The first tip that I have for you is finding resource extraction sites. So using this website here edtools.ddns.net forward slash res dot php you can find nearby resource extraction sites. What you need to do is you need to type in your current location, hit search, and there you go. So it will tell you whether or not there is a beacon, there is a compromised beacon that you can go to to do some combat in, if there's a hazardous, high, medium, slash regular, or low. It also tells you how many there are. The one tip that I would suggest that is that in an eagle, I would not suggest going to a Hasres site because at Hasres sites there are no space cops. No space cops at all, so they will not be able to help you out at all. And you really need them when you're in a high, medium or low resource extraction site to make the first move on a wanted ship. The reason why you'd want to do that is because if you fire the first shot then that wanted ship will target you until there's something more powerful. So then you kind of want to, you know, make sure you kind of follow them around a little bit. You can make the first shot if you wanted to, if you know that there's a larger space cop there that they can take the heat, then you can. But I would suggest waiting around, seeing if you can see any like laser light shows going on, go over there, scan the wanted ship, make sure that it does come up as being wanted, and then you can shoot at them and as long as the the target triangles that are around the ship go red that means that as long as they are red when they die that means that you get a payout another thing that i would suggest doing is going out in a wing you can do this with one other person or another three to have a full wing of four uh, if you don't have anyone to join you for whatever reason then what you can do is you can join my discord my discord has heaps of people from different time zones that are definitely willing to go out and help another fellow commander so the link for that will be in the description below as well as the link for the hasbro site as well so definitely go check those out let's see how much i can earn in 10 minutes in a high res site all right let's go
Now that we're back from our little jaunt with the combat in the Eagle, I did admittedly go for a little bit longer than 10 minutes, maybe 15 or 20. I was, I was just having too much fun. So let's see what we had earned with flying around in our combat Eagle. Okay, so we've earned 3.2 million credits flying on our own in an unengineered eagle. That's not bad. Now, if you found this video helpful, make sure that you like, comment, and subscribe, and all that jazz. If you found that you've built slightly differently, do let me know. I'm always interested in seeing new builds. That's it for this video. Fly safe, commanders.